Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You got your boys here, Lanny and Bert. The Dividend Diplomats. Today is going to be a fun video, everybody. Yesterday, we talked about five stocks where Lanny has earned over 500% gains on the those five companies. So I'm going to put my own little spin on this in a different light. I have two stocks, and I'm going to ask a simple question. Should I take the gains off the table on these companies and invest them elsewhere? We're going to find out by running these companies through our screener and evaluating them side by side and saying, you know what? Should we sell, take the gain, and then move it into another stock? Should he stay or should he go, guys? Smash that subscribe button. Give us a nice thumbs up here on the road. 220,000 subscribers are WrestleMania, guys. Help us get there. Help us right now. It takes two seconds. Click it. Bert, you've got quite a little dilemma you've created here. Two stocks that you're curious if you should exit and then reinvest. So I'm very excited to see what these stocks are, what's on your mind, kind of what is Bert the Hurt thinking right now? Yeah, there's no definite answer here. So I'd obviously love everybody's feedback on what they would do in my situation. Would you get rid of the company and would you not? And obviously... Let's have some fun today, everybody. Let's talk about these two dividend stocks here. Let's go. Let's have some fun, guys. All yeah. right. So, Bert, yeah. one, first off, you know, how long have you owned both of these stocks? Do you have any, like, range or idea? Probably two to three years each. Um, one okay. of them I haven't bought in two years. The other one I've been adding to I is as early as Q, as late as Q2. 2024 before they started to pop up a little bit this year so one of them i've been adding to in 2024 but yeah they've owned them so each one would be long-term capital gains except for that portion that i added in 2024 for the second one it was an interesting time this first company i bought when it was high um and then i got beaten down even more so i lowered my cost basis to it you know what i'll just say who the company is number one landing so i can actually put some numbers behind it stanley black and decker ticker symbol swk that's right stanley. i bought them i bought my first tranche of shares around 125 126 it dropped as low as in the 70s so overall my cost basis by the time i averaged down and i bought more shares of stanley black and decker was right around $100 <sighs> share. So now they're at $107.38. So I'm staring at $323 gain or 7.5%. They battled themselves all the way back up and I'm sitting in the green on Stanley Black and Decker. How many of you are sitting in the green on SWK guys, oh, a dividend king over yeah. here? And that's part of the reason why I'm even considering Stanley Black and Decker right now is it was so far beaten down. I've been in the red almost immediately since I bought this company. So you know what? It's green again. Time to just say thanks for the memory, Stanley Black and Decker move along. <laughs> yes. But it'll be an interesting one. Number, what do you think, Lanny? Should we go through the metrics here and just say it or should we introduce the second company? What's your feeling? I think we go through the metrics so people get an idea of why they're also on the list. Okay, let's uh, do that then. So we'll put them through our stock screener, which looks at P ratio, payout ratio, history of increasing dividends, yeah. and the dividend yield. Stanley Black and Decker, just to rip through them quickly, their PE ratio is very high, actually. It's 25.63. So even with this coming back, they are still overvalued. If you would chop off... 20%, they'd still be overvalued. You chopped off 30%, they'd still be overvalued in our screener. So they are not a cheap stock for a company that hasn't performed that well over the last two years. Yeah, and you know, there's a reason why what's happened to the stock price over the last 52 weeks that we'll get into. But the scarier part right now that I think Bert's going to hinge on is this dividend payout ratio. You know, we always have that 60% ceiling. Sometimes certain industries go above that, you know, um, consumer goods sometimes they're at that 65 maybe 70 percent utilities are usually higher REITs on the funds from operations mm -hmm. AFFO ratio as we like to call it should be higher but Stanley paying three dollars and 28 cents in dividends as a dividend king dividend pale ratio right now is about 78 percent so definitely definitely higher even higher than the slight buffer zone too yeah, you know, because their payout ratio has been so high, their dividend growth has stalled. 
sure, they are dividend king of increase for 55 years, but their dividend growth over the last five years has been pathetic. The last few years, it's been barely 1%, barely 2%. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is 4%. So it's it's not been great. The cream rises though, right, Bert? No, I'm yeah. kidding. So yeah, for me, 55 years, five, 4% average growth. So yeah. But what about the 3% dividend yield that's, you know, that, that Stanley Rock still? Yeah. I mean, 3% yield, it's barely above their five-year average dividend yield of 2.63%. So you're not even getting that much of a premium on their five-year average dividend yield anymore because it's climbed so much in share price this year. So that's the interesting yeah. thing. Up 37% this year, guys. You know, again, share price has been rising quite a bit over the last mm -hmm. 52 weeks. So yeah. go ahead, Bert. Yeah, I mean, one other thing I would like to note here is we look at their debt, their long-term debt too, because that matters when you see a high payout ratio. Their debt has nearly doubled over the last five years. It went from $3.2 billion as of the end of the year in 2019 to $6.1 billion as of the end of the year in 2023. And their last reporting period on Seeking Alpha showed debt of $5.6 billion. So a little bit of paying down the debt, but still much more levered than they were just five and a half years ago. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of debt to just slack on. You're handicapping yourself, but rates are coming down. There might be a little bit of a window here where maybe they have some repricing downward that could happen, maybe help with that cash flow um, from a cash flow standpoint, but maybe not to get rid of their entire debt or parts of their debt load. So that's Stanley Black and Decker, guys. Let us know before we jump into stock number two, what do you think of Stanley Black and Decker? Are there best days behind them or ahead of them? Yeah. All right, Bert. Next stock here, which is kind of a shock, but yeah. you know, kind of could make sense here within the industry. Medtronic ticker symbol M D T, the almost dividend king that I have been buying up, as I said, over the last two and a half years, as recently as this year. The company has increased their dividend for 48 consecutive years. I own forty four hundred dollars of Medtronic. We put Oof. in about thirty nine hundred, so that's a five hundred and three dollar gain. Or we are up twelve point eight two percent. So it's a modest gain. It's not bad. Not the best. Not the worst. Trailing the S and P five hundred significantly, but it's a gain. A gain is a gain, and it's not looking getting plot. So let's see what Medtronic's metrics are looking like. Their PE ratio is sixteen. So. They're in a different position compared to Stanley Black and Decker. They aren't trading as high. They're not overpriced right now. They're still undervalued. They still pass that first metric of our stock screen, which I think is interesting. They they do. You know, again, that PE is pretty nice. But when we get into the payout ratio, does it look like Stanley's or let's see what it looks like? $2.80 in dividends. So the payout ratio, the safety in this dividend. I would still say it's relatively safe. Again, I don't want to go down this path like a Walgreens Boots Alliance, <laughs> hmm. but 51% payout ratio is pretty safe. Yeah, so I dig it and I like it. Their dividend growth has been solid, 5.97%. They've increased for 48 years, so they're almost that dividend king. So average right now, not bad, not bad. Average, not pulling my socks off, not causing me to curl up in a ball and cry underneath the table anytime soon. Medtronic's just solid dividend growth, slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race here with Medtronic. Again, yielding well over 3%, 3.17%, you know, slightly above, mm -hmm. you know, by 55 basis points in their five-year average yield, which is 2.62%. Debt to equity is much better. Yeah. Um, you know, and their, than, than Stanley's. Yeah, and their debt five years ago was $21.9 billion. Now in their last reporting period at the end of July, $26 billion. So debt's increased modestly, probably in line with a lot of companies out there that have grown. But you haven't seen any large ups, large decreases. They've just used debt to grow, and it's not outrageous. And as you said, Lenny, that debt to equity is only 0.58. So it's pretty manageable. Yeah, so, and you know, you've invested... You've got, you're sitting on a nice little unrealized gain on both stocks, obviously much better with MDT. And Bert, which one did you buy as early as Q2 24? MDT. MDT is the one oh, I've been, I've been adding to them when they were in the high 70s and low 80s. I was just buying yeah. consistently two, three shares. I liked them much better at that price. Obviously, 80 is great because you see your gains pop up, but that's why I'm up 12% because that's why I was buying them about 12% ago. So, 
That makes sense. Gotcha. It tracks out. It tracks. So I mean, this is a lot of capital. If you sold both positions here, that's a ton of capital here, right? Yeah. I'm just looking yeah, at the yeah, charts. Yeah. If you guys see me peek over here, it's because I'm looking at the charts. Yeah, that would be nine thousand dollars total to get redeployed. <laughs> and a hundred I SWK gives me $164 of dividend income, $140 of dividend income for MDT. So that's $300 dividend income combined. So. Well, here's a question, you know, as you're looking at, especially Stanley Black and Decker, you know, do you have any stock or an ETF in mind? You know, if you were, yeah. I mean, it's funny. The one that jumps out at me is the one in the last video. For some reason, it's, I don't know why Hershey's catching my eye. Like that kind of company, it's well below Race. the average. Yeah, it's at a three percent yield. So that's kind of what pick. Well, that's kind of why I honed in on these two stocks. Would it's it make fair. sense to like? It would be a dividend income neutral swap there, and would it, yeah, would it be that, pretty like flat from a yeah. no gain, no loss. Yeah, and it's um, yield same dividend growth for Hershey is much better. They're not the cheapest either, but they're Hershey for obvious reasons. But they have their own headwinds that I need to take a look at further. And I need to see what's going on with Hershey before I do this. And yeah, yeah, there might be changing up that peanut butter Reese recipe over there. Yeah. I mean, looking at these two, if I'm going to pick one between Stanley Black and Decker or Medtronic, I would say I would sell Stanley Black and Decker first. That debt, don't like it. PE ratio is much more expensive. Payout ratio is high. They've, is it time to ride the gain of the last 52 weeks where they're up 37%? Take this as an opportunity of just get out. Um, get out and then move it into a company that's much more stable in my mind, like a Hershey that's not quite as tied to home improvement projects. It's not quite tied to co consumer spending on massive projects or DIY projects, which are probably going to be the first things to go if we do hit a recession here soon. Oh, boy. Now. Yeah. Medtronic, oh. though, talking through it, I'm less likely to sell them just based on how they performed in our screener. It's a tough one, though. Community, what do you guys think about this and Hershey's? Let's even throw them in here right now. Is any one or both of these stocks a good time to swap? Um, Bert, do you have any unrealized or any losses that you could that you need to offset this year? I'm sure I could find some. I'm looking. At <laughs> I'm sure I could name a stock. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Pot. I'm looking at you, Warner Brothers. I'm looking at you. Paramount. Paramount. Looking at you. Looking at you. Yeah, sorry, no, no more. No more. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Walgreens. Um, but yes, nonetheless, there are plenty that I could offset to make this even more neutral. So maybe it's not selling Medtronic. It's finding $300 of losses to offset with Stanley Black and Decker so that it's neutral. And then it becomes, if I do do Hershey's, a $5,000 dump right into it. Hmm. All right, guys, let us know. Appreciate your guys' feedback. You know, Bert doesn't need to have to doesn't have to make a decision here. He doesn't have to sell um, as he evaluates kind of what makes sense for his personal dividend stock portfolio here, guys. What helps him sleep better at night, have a better quality dividend stock, or increase the quality of the dividend portfolio, possibly dividend yield and dividend growth, guys. So let us know what you guys think. You know, it's all yeah. about reaching financial freedom here. So it's about, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And remember, you're either with us or you're against us. Jack. That was Bert, The Hurt, and Lanny from the D, D, Over, and Out.